Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another video. Today we are going to be looking at the new Altenew 36 pan watercolor set. Um, so they're totally beautiful. I love them. I want to warn you, this is a long video. Watercolor for me is always a long video. So I made myself a little swatch sheet. You can see like the black um, diagonal line in there and that was just to help me kind of test the opacity. I'm also using the Best Buds set from Altenew for my card. I am stamping this down on Canson watercolor paper and Barely Beige ink from Simon Says Stamp. Um, I'm working on the rough side, so I ended up having to stamp it three times to be able to be comfortable um, seeing all of the details in the flowers and the leaves to paint them uh, since I wanted a no-line coloring look. Um, but that's just what I was going for. Uh, you know, you could do this super simple with embossing or with a black outline or maybe another color that was closer to um, the, fl the flower colors you wanted. I am doing just a little bit of masking because I wanted some of the leaves to be behind. And I have found with the Simon Says Stamp ink, um, because it is alcohol-based, um, the line doesn't go away. You can paint over it, but sometimes you can still see that line that's there from wherever the stamping was. So back to these paints. So when I got the paints, um, opened them up, loved all of the colors. One of the things that I super love about them is that you can remove each individual color. So like, let's say you are really in love with, um, I don't know, fresh lemon, and that's the color you use all the time. And all of the rest of them um, are full and that one is out. You can replace just that color, which is fantastic. Um, I didn't notice any as far as like the uh, um, opacity. They are artist grade. I didn't really have any chalky finishes over any of my, like painting over any of my black lines. Um, I think the the lighter colors, um, I had a little bit with the cotton candy and the fresh lemon, but that is, I mean, I mean barely noticeable, honestly. Um, so I just did my little scrap sheet on a uh, A2 size card, so um, four and a quarter by five and a half, and it fits perfectly into my little carrying case. Uh, let's talk about the card real quick. We'll come back to the other um, features of this watercolor set. So I'm doing some negative painting. In this stamp set, there is a stem that you can stamp. I opted not to do that. I decided to paint my own stems. So in order to get them down, I knew I wanted a background, kind of an artsy background. And um, so I'm doing some negative painting. You can do this one of two ways. I did it originally just by putting down some clean water and adding pigment to it. So I was basically painting with the water. The, the other way you can do it is by picking up a little bit of paint, painting that on there, and then bringing in some clean, clear water and letting it... Um, kind of melt out into the edges. So I started with um, Mountain Mist, and then I'm also gonna add in some Lagoon and a little bit of Ocean Waves. So it was a bluish teal, Tiffany blue kind of background that I was going for, because uh, if you watch my channel, you know that's really the channel, or the, <laughs> the channel, what? The color scheme that I kind of love. Um, so just going through, getting those stems where I want them to be back to this watercolor set. So right now, Altenew currently has a um, promotion going on that if you buy the 36 set of watercolors, you get the carrying case as a free gift, which is pretty awesome because the carrying case is really nice. It has a palette in the lid. Um, some of the palette lids come off completely. Mine does. Mine comes off completely. You can mix it as a palette and then um, the easiest way I found to put it back together is to just put the lid back on top and then push it closed and the um, the little hinges snap back together. Um, and then they also are releasing some water brushes. I'm using a number two round brush here by the Black Velvet Company just because I'm not a big fan of water brushes and I didn't have too much time to play around with the piece. 
um, because I was out of town. Um, so that's kind of my own bad there. Um, I'm hoping to, I really did enjoy them. I liked them a lot. So I'm hoping to use them again in the future and I may try the water brush. This um, video is part of a blog hop. Um, if you're watching, it's August 9th, 2018. That's release day. And um, so there was a huge hop. I will link to that below. There's giveaways over on the blog as well as on the all to new card blog and their scrapbooking blog. So there's a bunch of chances to win. Uh, you'll definitely want to go check that out. Plus just an endless amount of talent from the artists who are on the hop. Um, so I am going to speed this up a little bit because otherwise we're going to be here all day. It's still like almost a 30 minute video and that's with me having like speeding up the whole thing. So it took me about I want to say like two hours to paint the entire thing, um, which is, I mean, splendid and like a total stress reliever. And um, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. But as far as putting it into a video, that can be um, kind of difficult. I know that's a lot of time to spend watching one video. I wanted to get the review part of it um, done in the beginning in case you aren't a regular follower. I had somebody leave a comment the other day and one of my videos and it said um beautiful card but i could do without the life drama and like legit my response to her was you're about the only one like most people come for the art and stay for the stories um so clearly i'm not everyone's cup of tea which is what i told the very nice lady i said feel you know feel free to skip them or put them on mute and just watch the art um but most of you leave comments if i don't tell a story and um you know, the, the reality of it is because I do share my real life with you, I'm not always going to have a story. My life is not always that entertaining. Sometimes I just go to work Monday through Friday and nothing interesting happens to me. Um, other times, lots of interesting things happen to me. Um, so, and then also please know that like if you watch a video that I've done for um, a company that's hired me or for somebody else's blog, um, oh, I'm doing little spatters of the colors too because I, I love that. I love that little the look that it gives. Um, please know that when I'm working for somebody else, like typically I'm not going to tell super outlandish stories. Like it's their channel or their product, um, their business. And so that's not something that I'm, I'm going to do just as, as somebody who works in the field. So now we're moving on. We're using bamboo starting with that and then shading it with the um, forest blades uh, for the leaves and the stems. For the leaves and the stems, typically what I like to do is when I'm doing a stem, I like to put down my lightest color and then I start to add shading underneath the flower or in this case the buds um, and then I carry it down one side of the uh, stem. That's going to create a shadow and make it look more realistic. Um, when I do these, as far as um, like the shading portion of it, I just pick up very little bit on my um, brush and um, I lay that where I want it to. Then I wash off my brush, clean it off, and uh, we'll blot it off on a paper towel and then go back in and kind of smooth it out. Um, if you are finding that when you are watercoloring, even though you've blotted off your brush, there's still too much water on it. And ultimately, that's the hardest part of watercolor, and I still struggle with it, is controlling the amount of water you're using. Um, if you find that there's still too much after you blotted it off, blot just the base. Because you still want the, the tip of the brush to be damp enough to spread your color around, but you don't want like this huge water droplet to fall onto the piece that you're painting ask me how I know, because um, it can ruin it. So in order to get some dimension here, I want the stem of the tallest one to be in the background. So I'm adding um, some darker shading to that to help push it into the into the back. And so it looks like it's behind the other one. I wasn't getting dark enough shading. Uh, it wasn't really pushing it back enough for me. And there's an evergreen in here, which I didn't even think of. I probably could have used that. Instead, what I did was mix um, the forest blades with a little bit of jet black. And you'll see as soon as I put it in here, it automatically pushes that um, stem behind the other one. So it starts to make more sense visually 
that one would be behind the other. Anything lighter is going to sit on top. Anything darker is going to fall into the background. So again, I'm going to speed this, um, you know, this process up at some point. I'm going to show you one leaf and then um, we're going to go from there. There is a leaf, the one in the top right, that I struggled with. We were not friends. It didn't like me, did not want me to sit at the lunch table with it. I was, but I couldn't leave it alone. I was like a little kid. I just could not leave it alone. And sometimes um, that's your best bet is to just walk away and come back to it. Uh, I probably would have had, it ended up being fine. Like I was happy with the results, but it probably would have been a much less frustrating process and I wouldn't have had to keep starting over if I would have just walked away in the beginning. So for this particular leaf that I'm showing you here at regular speed, I wanted the shading to be um, more behind the bud of the flower. I'm also doing almost like little tiny zigzags on the edges because these are roses. That's how their um, their leaves look is they have like kind of that jagged edge. I painted right over the little connectors for the leaves to the stems and then I just put them back in as I was painting. I wasn't even worried about that when I was doing the background. So since we have a full 20 minutes together, um, let's start talking about this girl's trip, okay? So I took a girl's trip with two of my best friends um, and we went for, for five days um, and it was amazing. It was so good. And I'm, if you follow my channel, you know I'm a pretty anxious person when it comes to travel. Um, I'm just not very good at it. And so I had went and talked to uh, my doctor and had talked to them about, um, you know, my situational anxiety with travel. They had made a recommendation for a prescription. I decided I wasn't comfortable taking it um, because it didn't really, it treated, I guess, the symptoms, but then the, the medication was actually for um, something completely different. Now, it was approved to treat anxiety, but it was for something completely different, and I just wasn't comfortable. So I was like, you know what? It's two hours of my life on a plane. I will just suck it up, buttercup, because that is what I've always done, and I've managed to make it through. It's not comfortable, and I'm not saying that for everybody with anxiety that that will work, but that's what works for me. I just try to push through it, and... Um, eventually I can get to the point where I am somewhat comfortable as long as there's no like turbulence or if we're on the highway there's no like crazy accident. We're back to this leaf here that gave me all kinds of trouble. Here's why the leaf gave me all kinds of trouble. Because it's curled, okay? So part of the leaf needs to be lighter. I need that highlighted edge and then I need the inside to be darker so that it looks dimensional. However, I just kept getting like this one note color on the inside. You know why? I didn't leave it alone. I didn't let the beauty of watercolor is putting the pigment in the water and letting the water do the work. I'm over here trying to manipulate everything just to death, just absolutely murdering this watercolor. And then I'm shocked when I get a color that's all the same color. So I blot it up and they do lift very nicely. Um, as far as the um, the watercolors go. I had no issue picking up the color. And then I'm going to try again because I just can't leave it alone. I just cannot leave it alone. Um, so anyway, so my girlfriend, Ange, uh, decided that she was, literally she decided, she didn't eat, like she brought it up to me and I was like, no, you don't have to do that. And then she called me and was like, this is the thing I did. So she flew from her home to uh, Cleveland where I am and then flew with me from Cleveland to Florida, where we were going. Like, that was so super nice of her. Like, she added a whole extra leg of her trip, which we're going to get to that in a minute. So she came in. Her flight was supposed to land at midnight, and then our flight to Florida left at 6.40 the next morning. So we were supposed to be back to the airport at 5-ish. So she has a connecting flight in between um, I don't remember where she was coming from. Maybe Phoenix? I don't, I, I'm not sure. But anyway, her, so I'm supposed to pick her up at midnight. We're going to come home, basically catch like three hours of sleep, go back to the airport and then catch a flight. Um, we did not. We did not do that because her flight was delayed um, until I think she got in at 2.30. So now we have to be back there at 5. 
I'm sure this is going to be shocking news to all of you who know me, um, but I wasn't packed yet. <laughs> I was not packed yet. I was doing other things that needed to get done. And so I uh, went and picked her up at the airport, came back home. She kind of like napped, pseudo napped on the couch while I just threw anything and everything into a bag. Then rushed back up to the airport and um, caught our 640 flight. I was a little nervous during takeoff. That's always the worst part for me, the takeoff and the landing. Um, but then she's just like, go to sleep. And then I had not slept all night. So that was pretty easy. Plus, I take Dramamine for motion sickness. If I could not, I mean, if just the anxiety wasn't enough. Um, this is me scooping away more dark color that I've put in there that I had no business putting in there because I couldn't just walk it away and leave it alone. That's what's happening here, in case you were curious. Um so I could not stay awake, which was fantastic. I fell asleep and I slept until we got to Nashville. When we got to Nashville, we knew we had a layover, but apparently it wasn't even, it was like a 30 minute one because we didn't even get off the plane. So the way Southwest is, um, you don't uh, have an assigned seat. You check in and that's how you get your boarding pass. And then um, the, you know, A group boards, B group boards, whatever. And so you want to be an A group so that you can pick your seat I was in a group so when I picked our seats on the plane I was able to pick two together but even then because we were a little bit late getting to the airport wait side note so I'm putting in the little veins um, I'm using very minimal paint uh, and just the very teeny tiny tip of the paintbrush not pushing down whatsoever to add in the little veins of the leaves so that they look more realistic um, definitely want to remember to be use lighter color on your lighter areas and darker color on your darker areas or it isn't going to look right um, so especially that leaf that's up in the front bottom left you can see it's a little bit darker on the dark side lighter on the light side so anywho back to this travel story so I had picked two seats that were together but because we were running late I was one of the last people to board as in that group and so we were all the way at the back of the plane legit last row and so she's trying to make her way back while everybody else is trying to make their way forward because they kept coming to the back of the plane hoping that there were more seats and there wasn't any more seats eventually um, the stewardess actually made an announcement and said there's no the, turn around people there's no seats back here um, so slept all the way to Nashville. When we got to Nashville, they were like, yeah, you're not even getting off the plane, but if you want to switch seats, you can. So then we moved up to about halfway. Um, I was, <laughs> this is the beauty of being able to sleep anywhere. Thanks dad, because I totally get it from him. I was passed out. And I don't mean like I was like a little bit out of it. I was kind of sleeping. I mean, I was unconscious. <laughs> like a coma when they were boarding the people from Tennessee um I was totally out I slept I slept through the takeoff I slept through the landing I legit didn't wake up until we landed in Florida and Angie was like Kelly you're gonna get you gotta we're gonna have to get off the plane here and I was like oh oh my word we've arrived which was really truly honestly the best way for me to travel side note um I like how I call the card the side note like that's not what you're here to see anyway um so there the bud at the top already had two like green areas i believe the one on the bottom here that these are supposed to be petals but i wanted a little bit more greenery um so that is what i did i decided to paint them as if they were uh, little tiny leaves instead of um petals i'm not sure if that was a good choice because at the end of it with as far as the painting of the flower i'm not sure if i really love the way this particular one turned out and maybe i would have liked it better if it had um the petals that were folding out but i think that was a me thing so the way that i like to do watercolors is um i like to lay down a line of color rinse off the brush blot the base of my bristles and then go in with clean clear water from the lightest point to the darkest point so that it starts spreading out that color and letting the water do the work um, there are times where i will um, do it in the reverse so i put down the line of color and then i will grab the color and pull it out but that's really only typically if i don't mind it being a little bit darker um, I do highly recommend if you're doing no line coloring, keeping your stamp set nearby. Every once in a while, you'll see me kind of like with my hand like poised over the piece, but not doing anything. 
it's because I'm looking at the stamp set so I know where the lines are um, once you get started painting sometimes it's really easy to get lost now that doesn't mean that if you get a little bit lost you can't make it up as you go I mean nobody's gonna hold it up to the stamp set and be like is this perfect match and if they do then they're terrible people don't you don't need that kind of negativity in your life okay but you can fake it and it will be fine so I always like to start lighter and then get darker gradually which means I do it a couple of times um, this particular flower I painted with the pinkish purples. There's a couple of different um, pinkish reds in this watercolor set, which I totally adore because I love options, full set syndrome and all that jazz. Um, so the pinkish purple ones are the pink diamond puffy heart. I mean, come on, doesn't that just, how does that not make you smile? Say puffy heart and then you smile because it's adorable. Um, puffy heart, purple wine and cosmic berry. Then there's like a few corally ones um, that are cotton candy, coral berry, and I would probably shade those with the crimson, which isn't next to it, but they do look like they go together very nicely. And then there's two um, that are pink, but less purple, um, and that's grapevine, and I th I'm probably going to mispronounce this because I don't know how to pronounce anything. Rubelite, I think. Um, but anywho, they're very pretty colors. I wanted to use all of the kind of pinkish purple ones in here so I could get a comparison and you guys could see the difference. So this one is the genuine like pink purple ones, the pink diamond puffy heart purple wine cosmic berry. That's what I used on this one. I also, just because I like color variation and I think it's super pretty, I dropped in a little bit of um, citrus burst because I like pink and yellow flowers. Um, I like how that looks together. Anywho, back to the traveling. So we finally get to Florida. It's wonderful. Dawn picks us up at the airport, but now I haven't slept forever. We're staying at a hotel just that one night um, because I had wanted to come in because I wanted to see my Florida mom. My Florida mom is actually Dawn's mom and I haven't seen her in two years. So I wanted to be able to stop by and see her, uh, which we did. We left the airport, went directly to mom's house and um, hung out at the pool and chatted and it was awesome. However, I had not slept. Angie had not slept. But we all know that when I don't sleep um, or I'm dehydrated or I don't know, the weather is mad at me, my allergies kick in. Straight up, guys, my nose is running the entire time. There's nothing I can do to stop it. I'm using my prescription nose spray. I am um, taking the Sudafed. I am do I mean just everything that I can. I took, had taken an allergy med before I left. I'm drinking water by the gallon trying to make it stop. I did get it so that it was manageable until I could get to the hotel and take a nap. Um, but as you can hear me talking right now, I also have allergy problems again. Again, why do you say? We're going to skip the whole trip in the middle. Not forever. There's just too much story to tell you in this one thing. We're just going to concentrate on the actual air fair flying. So when the trip is over and we make it back to the airport, um, by the way, the first night I was able to take a nap and then they did stop. We went out to dinner. It was all good in the hood. Um, we actually ran into, well, we watched a woman, very sweet woman, and I just felt like it was going to be flashbacks for the rest of my weekend um, or a future representation of the rest of my weekend. We watched her lose her shoe and then play railway bumpers because she couldn't walk straight. Poor lady. Um, she did get her shoe back, though. Don't be concerned. Um, anyway... So when we get to the airport, um, we almost immediately get a text message that says, because we have a connecting flight in Baltimore, um, that the flight from Baltimore to Cleveland is running an hour late. This is no big deal, except for the fact that Ange has to catch a flight out of Cleveland to make another connecting flight to get back home. So now we're like, what, the, what are we going to do? We're trying to figure it out. And they're like, oh, well, you're going to be cutting it close. And we're like, thanks, Southwest. Southwest did not have it together at all that day, let me just say. Um, there was another flight that we were sitting there. All of these people are like in line to board and they're like, your flight to Fort Lauderdale is going to be delayed by three hours. I was like, those poor people. Oh my word. So our flight was delayed um, from Baltimore to Cleveland. We got some Chick-fil-A, which was delicious. Who doesn't love Chick-fil-A? Chicken and biscuits. Um, and then 
uh, on the flight, we they actually, the guy there did us a solid and let us board um, with one of the first people. So we were in the second row. Um, again, I slept the whole time because we I've had no sleep yet again. Um, and so then we're standing there. The air conditioning in the plane breaks, okay? We're standing there waiting to get off the plane. And she's got to catch the next flight. We already know we're going to be cutting it close. And they're like, yeah, the air conditioner broke. Sorry about that, blah, blah, blah. It's a hot box in there. I mean, it's greenhouse effect. And not everybody loves the deodorant, people. Not everybody be smelling good. Um, so we're in there waiting, everybody's standing up and then they're like, oh, well, there's nobody to drive the jetway. Like, d- come on, Bill, Bill, where you at? Can you, can you get on the jetway so we can get off the hot box greenhouse plane? That'd be delightful. So finally we stand there for 20 minutes. No joke. She has to run, ru- like actual running through the airport, um, to get to her flight. They're calling her name over the, um, air like you know over the intercom she is the last person on the plane but she makes it hallelujah praise jesus then they have to she's supposed to fly into phoenix they actually have to reroute her because of weather so they fly her into tucson they wait out the storm supposedly wait out the storm in tucson fly to phoenix the the flight from phoenix to home um is completely loaded they're sitting there waiting and they do not have a pilot they don't have a pilot. So the flight gets canceled. She's stuck there. And the, this is like 3 a.m. by this time. She's been, we've been flying since uh, 11 a.m. So she's like, I'm just going to stay here. And I was like, no, your flight out tomorrow isn't until noon. So then we call like me from Ohio and her out there. I'm calling all of these hotel rooms trying to find her someplace to stay so she doesn't have to sleep on the floor. Every place is completely booked up. I finally find one. They won't let me book the room in my name because when she shows up, she has to be there with that credit card. And I'm like, that doesn't even make any sense, bro. Like, that does, if I call, like, if I booked it on the internet two weeks ago, and then I showed up and I paid with a different credit card, like, you would let me do that. And he's like, yeah. And I said, then that's not your policy. Like, I don't, and I was like, can you hold the room for 15 minutes? Because mind you, while she was standing there, another flight got canceled. So you just have a slew of people who are trying to find some place to sleep. So I call her, I give her the information. She actually ends up finding another hotel in the meantime. So think she, as I'm recording this, it's 7 p.m. the following day, and she still isn't home yet. Um, she is on her last flight, thank God, to get home. Um, but it was just, I was like, Southwest, how are you? I don't even understand how you are still in business. Um, but just the flying portion of it was a little bit crazy and I felt so terrible because she only did it for me so I wouldn't have to fly by myself. So like, thank you. So Andrew, I love you. (laughs) Thank you for doing that. I'm sorry. It was awful. Um, so that is the flying portion of the trip. Um, don't worry. There's plenty more things that happen. Plenty more stories. I would be happy to tell you. I wanted to check the lifting properties of the card. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm like sprinkling on just clean water. Now these have been dry for about an hour at this point and um, it's still lifted up super nicely. So that was nice. Um, I used a uh, sentiment from the same stamp set here, which I totally love. It says, and the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom, Um, which we all, I think, reached that point at some point. I used a couple... um, little glitter pen. I will use clear wink Estella on the flowers. Careful with that because it can reactivate it. And then that is the whole card. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.